didn't actually eat a plate of dirt for breakfast. But the reason that I have this plate of dirt here for breakfast, along with some yogurt that I'm actually going to be eating for breakfast, is because for today's video, I'm gonna be cooking a death row inmate's last meal and a plate of dirt just so happens to be James Edward Smith's last meal request, which he actually wasn't even granted. He wanted it, people think, for some sort of voodoo ritual or something, which he commonly practiced, but in the end, all they gave him was some yogurt, so that's what we're gonna have for breakfast today. So, James Edward Smith was sentenced to death for capital murder in Texas, but we're not gonna focus too much on the people for this video, just the weird and, I guess, somewhat disgusting things that they ordered for their last meal. And it feels really weird filming in the house as opposed to my van, I'm not gonna lie. Also, those up there, right there. My sister got me those as a uh, housewarming gift because they were here over the weekend. Don't have much so far, just kind of a table. And I have spent approximately a week total here and I'm already leaving to go on another trip in the back of my van. Hello! So this is where Justin's working. He works from home, so he doesn't have to live in the back of a van, but I'm leaving him here alone for the next month and a half while I go on my trip. So he's gonna have to hold the house down. See you in a month. See you in a month. Even though I just moved into the house, the truck camper that I'm building out that I've talked about a few times on this channel isn't gonna be here for about a month. So I figured instead of sitting here for a month waiting for it, might as well head out on another road trip. back so last night I got the van all cleaned up cleaned out ready to go I got some loose laundry on the bed that I still gotta put away but I'll deal with that later and the reason that I am going on this road trip is actually two reasons one is because I'm still gonna post videos in the van going out and doing trips and all this kind of stuff because I genuinely love doing it so I don't think you could force me to leave the van for any extended period of time so it's gonna be fun to uh, go out there and get on another road trip going somewhere else I haven't really planned out exactly where I'm gonna go yet but also the second reason is because I'm waiting for the truck camper to get here so until then makes no sense to just sit in my house although I don't know exactly where I'm going for the entirety of the road trip I do know where I'm going today and that is up into the mountains, so let's hit the road. So I'm starting this road trip today because in two days I have a flight out of Las Vegas and if you guys don't know, my house is in San Diego. I'm going home to see my girlfriend to help her move into her new townhouse. So this weekend when I was looking for flights, I looked at San Diego and the flights were just super expensive for no reason and since I live in my van, I know that every time I've flown out of Las Vegas, the flights have been super cheap. So I went and looked at flights from Las Vegas. They were like a third the price and I need to start this road trip anyway. So for the beginning of this road trip, our first destination is Las Vegas, but I don't want to head all the way there today because I don't have a death wish and don't want to camp in 108 degree heat. So we're going to drive up to the mountains where it's nice and cool tonight, find a campsite, then head down to Las Vegas tomorrow. And also, if you guys have any suggestions for where you want me to travel after I fly back into Las Vegas and uh, kind of hit the road eastward, let me know. Open to suggestions and hopefully we can find something cool to do. This death row meal that we're cooking tonight is given to us by a Miss Rhonda Bell Martin, who was sentenced to death October 11th, 1957. So to keep things short and sweet, Rhonda was a serial murderer. She killed her fourth husband, a bunch of her kids, and her method was using rat poison. Nice. So the last meal that we're making tonight is kind of weird, but honestly, Miss Rhonda wasn't very creative and for a last meal ever in all of existence, I don't really think she was creative enough, but I guess you guys can be the judge of that later on. Right now, I just need to grab all the ingredients so that I can make her final meal and hopefully make it well. See that? I know the difference between lettuce and cabbage. This time, we got the correct one. We got lettuce and not cabbage, but I mean, you can't really blame me. They do look very similar. On my last video, I made a Big Mac and I accidentally grabbed cabbage instead of lettuce and called it lettuce the entire video and got probably 10,000 comments from people saying that it was cabbage and not lettuce, so made sure to grab the right one this time. All right, we have shopped around a little bit, got everything that I need, a lot of the stuff 
I already have in the back of the van, so I didn't really need to pick up that much for this meal. And you might be wondering, this is a uh, very weird assortment of ingredients. And it kind of is. You'll just have to wait till I cook it to uh, see what it is. Oh, I'm so glad I'm getting out of this heat. I'm not really sure how much cooler it is up there, but I'll take any little bit I can get. Especially knowing that I'm gonna have to sit there and suffer tomorrow night in 108 degree weather in the airport parking lot in Las Vegas, so. Definitely not looking forward to that. So now that we've got everything packed away and ready to go, let's see how much cooler it really is up there at the top of the mountain. According to this, it is 109 degrees outside. So once we get up there, we'll check it again, see what it says. Hopefully it's a lot cooler. Also, this spot that I'm headed to to camp for the night is about an hour and a half out of my way to go to Vegas. So it's an hour and a half out of my way to get there, an hour and a half out of my way to get back. So it is kind of a pain to have to go seek out this cooler weather, but for me it's worth it. Mountains, here we come. Sometimes when I'm driving these super hilly roads that are uphill for 20, 25 miles at a time, it genuinely feels like my engine in my van is about to explode. She's just gonna give up going up one of these mountains. But it is beautiful up here. All right, I'm going a little bit too slow for the people behind me, so I'm gonna let them pass before they rear end me. She didn't seem happy. This thing does great going up mountains and going up hills and stuff, but with all the weight in the back, sometimes I can't get her to go up to the full speed limit, especially when I'm driving uphill for, I don't even know how many miles, at least 20 miles, four or 5,000 feet in elevation gain. We've already gone down 15, 20 degrees since we left. It's 89 right now. And I think we're less than halfway there. So it should be nice and cool when we get to the top. Burned about 15 gallons in the last 15 miles driving up that mountain. Tank's all filled up, only $108. Ready to go, finish up this drive and get to our campsite. Oh, which I can't wait, because I feel like I've driven for forever today. But while I was in a store, I did pick up one of these in the uh, little mini mart at this gas station. And it's like an apple juice, and supposedly when you bite it, it's supposed to make a sound. At least that's what I've seen on TikTok. This is the first time I've seen one in person. It was like a TikTok trend, like, I don't know, last year, maybe two years ago, but let's see. I don't know, maybe this is the wrong one and I'm just an idiot biting a plastic bottle. Anyways, let's get to the campsite. All right, we've made it to the top of the mountain. We are just about 0.7 miles down this windy back camping country road. It is currently 70 degrees out, which is much nicer than the 100 plus temperatures we left today. To be fair, the sun has done quite a bit of setting since we left. So once we get to the actual campsite, I'll see what the temperature is back in the valley now, and then compare that to what's up here to get a more fair of a reading or a judgment of how much cooler it actually is up here. And a beautiful sunset tonight too. So I think somewhere up this road is the national forest where we can camp. At least that's what the maps say. But I've yet to see anywhere that looks like a pullout uh, for camping. This road is very steep. Oh! Oh! All right, the paved road has ended, so that's a good thing. That means we're probably up here in the uh, National Forest area. I think maybe this is a campground right here. Not too sure. Yeah, we're just gonna assume it is. Pretty nice spot, too. And this is where we're gonna call home for the night. Ooh. Wow. It feels magnificent up here. Stand up up on this log too, right here. You can actually look down. We got a pretty nice view of Big Bear Lake from up here and it is dead silent. Very eerie. But yeah, this is it. Nice little quaint spot up here in the woods to cook our death row dinner. So I just looked it up. Uh, as you guys know, it's like 70, 72 where I am. I'm supposed to get down to like 64 tonight, which is perfect for sleeping. But if you look at this heat map, you can see the area that I'm in up here in the mountains is way, way cooler than pretty much 
every single other place around it. Over by Vegas, you can see it's real red, real dark red. And then over by the coast, it cools off. But yeah, definitely made a good decision. Coming out from 91 degree heat to 72. Without further ado, since we are very quickly, if not already, running out of sunlight, let's make some dinner. So the late Miss Rhonda Martin, whose last meal choice we're gonna be cooking tonight, chose to have a kind of three course meal all mixed in to one dish. So I'm gonna do my best to make it. First things first, as always, we gotta prep the ingredients. Not really much to do in terms of prep today. Honestly, it's just the potatoes. First things first, actually, let's get some water boiling. So typically when I do my uh, mashed potatoes, I'll peel the skin off, but I think this time I'm gonna leave it on. And definitely not because I don't feel like peeling the potatoes. That's definitely not why I'm leaving the skin on. And I'm just roughly cutting these for the boil because they are going to end up being mashed anyways. Oh, it's so peaceful and quiet up here. It's so nice. I have definitely missed this. Can't forget, gotta salt the water. And while we wait for this water to get started boiling, I am gonna get started on part two. So part two is pretty simple and I bet you can guess what it is just based on the ingredients of a bun, a beef patty, some lettuce, definitely not cabbage, and a tomato. So I'm gonna get started cooking this up and get that piece of the recipe out of the way. Throw some oil down in the pan, wait for that pan to heat up, and then we'll take one of these glorious Wagyu beef patties and get it nice and cooked up. All right, potato water is boiling. Ow. In they go. Bad boys ready for a flip. Ooh, look at that. Also, while we were waiting for this burger, I did get the oven started on preheating because I want to take one of these buns and toast it up. Melt up some butter real quick. Coat the top of this bun. And this is probably the main reason, honestly, why I wish I had a uh, microwave so I could melt stuff a lot easier than just jamming it in the pan and then rubbing it on here. Now we got some sesame seeds in our bun. Pop that in the oven. Should be ready in about 10 minutes. And I think our burger is finished. Take that off. Hopefully we didn't overcook it. Finish prepping the rest of the ingredients for that, which is essentially just this tomato and then some lettuce as toppings. She, I guess, wasn't very fond of cheeseburgers, which kind of sucks for me, because I honestly cannot tell you the last time that I had a burger without cheese on it. All right, so I just grabbed the buns for the uh, burger out of the oven. Almost burned my finger off. Through the patty, I lost half my sesame seeds, but that's okay, we still got some of them. So now we can assemble our burger. Just a plain old hamburger, and that is officially part one of what she ordered for her last meal. It's so nice, there's not a single bug, at least that I've seen, that's been up here since I've been here. I've been able to keep this door completely wide open the entire time I've been cooking, and it's nighttime with these big bright lights on. I guess maybe we're past that time of the year. So, take the potatoes, dump them out into a separate bowl. I don't have a potato masher, so this is gonna suck. Before we start mashing those, we're gonna take some milk, some butter, and a little bit of salt. We're gonna throw it in the pot, let that heat up for a little while, and then we'll throw that in with the potatoes while we're mashing them. There we go. I'm also gonna throw in, I think, a little bit of uh, garlic powder. Now, I can do my best to mash these with a fork. But I don't anticipate this being very fun to do. All right, so I ended up using this dumpling maker as like a makeshift masher, because I was able to get a little bit more force with it. That seems to be working decently well, so. We'll just mash these up till we get a nice consistency, add the butter, get them nice and smooth. And if you haven't already realized, part two of this recipe is mashed potatoes. That's the second thing she wanted. And after I finish this, we'll move on and we'll get part three in the oven. Don't know what's going on out there. Definitely some weird noises coming from someone outside. It sounded like they were walking up the hill and struggling or something, but we got this mashed up as good as I can. So now we'll add our butter and milk mixture. Get that folded in there. These mashed potatoes will be ready to go. Two out of three parts completed. One more to go. And this last one, 
I'm genuinely the most excited about. It's actually one of my personal favorite foods of all time. And I know, I always get comments that I have a bad habit of wiping my hands on my pants, and now I'm starting to realize every time I do it, because I really do, I think I have an issue with wiping my hands on my pants, but I'm not sure a remedy to stop doing it, so. So for this last part, got myself some croissant rolls. Oh. <laughs> that scared me. I guess that was a uh, elevation change, building up pressure in this little tin. But we're gonna be taking these croissant rolls, turning them into Cinnabons for our final piece to our dish. Flour my board here. Then we can take our dough. Should have got the uncut croissant dough, but too late now. What can you do? And I'm gonna try to rebuild this into one sheet of dough. Hopefully. All right, that's good enough. So now that we have somewhat of a cohesive rectangular cinnamon roll base to work with, take some more butter, melt it in the pot. Not too much, I think I might've put too much in there. And then once that's done, we can spread that all over the top of our pastry until it's nice and coated in a very fine, even layer of butter. Now that we've got that done, we can take the cinnamon and sugar that I have been mixing off camera, spread that around evenly. And now we can take our pastry, fold up the end, and roll it up into a tight circle. Trying to keep it together as one piece, which it doesn't look like it wants to stay that way. Oh, there we go. So now that we've got that, get in our big round pan, pour our extra butter in there, and then take our Cinnabons or cinnamon rolls and slice them up. And then throw them in the pot. Then we'll take this, throw this in the oven, Wait 15 minutes and our three piece meal dinner will be completed. Woo! Those look good. So while I was waiting for these to bake off camera, I made some quick icing with the vanilla, some of that milk, and then a crap ton of uh, powdered sugar. So that's all that is. But now we can finally plate our dish now that our burger and mashed potatoes are thoroughly cold, take out, oh, not that way, two of these Cinnabons. One. And then drizzle those bad boys with some icing. There we go. That, my friends, is what Rhonda Bell Martin had the night before she had her life cut short by the Texas government. And now you guys can see what I said about it not being really the craziest of last request meals. I mean, it's a little bit different because it's got the cinnamon rolls, the mashed potatoes, and the burger, which is just a weird combo. But all in all, not the most adventurous meal um, that I think I could come up with if it was my last meal ever. That's kind of why I wanted to keep it pretty mild for this video, because I'm thinking about turning this into a series as well, where I cook prisoners on death rows last meal ever, cook it and rate it, and see who overall had the best and who had the worst last meal of their life. So when I was doing my research the other day, there are some really, really outlandish ones. Like this one, he had two chicken fried steaks, two fried chicken breasts, three fried pork chops, two hamburgers with lettuce, tomato, onion, and salad dressing, four slices of bread, half a pound of fried potatoes and onion with a half of something else. It cuts off right there. And then this one, that has two fried eggs over medium, four slices of bacon, sliced tomatoes, fried green tomatoes, pineapple slices with mayonnaise, white bread, a banana, and a medium-sized bottle of V8 juice. So there are hundreds and hundreds of options online for final meals that I would love to cook. So go do some research, come back, send me a DM, or leave a comment on this video, and maybe I'll do the most liked comment for what last meal I should do next. But until then, cheers, Rhonda. Really wish you chose to put cheese on your burger. Overall, I think Rhonda could have done better. I don't think these foods are bad, but I think I'd probably give this one a 6.3 out of 10 just for the lack of creativity and the fact that she didn't get cheese on her burger. So Rhonda has got this series started off. Leave a comment. Let me know who you guys think I should do next. I think for now, I'm going to finish this meal and then go to bed because the sun has completely set and it's very dark out. It's also nine o'clock and I drove a long ways today. So as always, truly appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, think about clicking that subscribe button. It really does help out the channel. Leave a comment below for whatever recipe you think I should do and I will catch you guys next time. Mm -hmm.